Welcome to the Australian Detailing Professionals Podcast, the premier destination for expert advice from Australia's leading detailers and aftermarket professionals. Talking auto to marine and everything in between. Here's your host, Alex Schrader. Hi everybody, Alex here from Australian Detailing Professionals and today I'm sitting with Mark Farrell, the owner of Brilliant Polish. So we're talking metals and metal polishing mainly in this episode, but who knows where we'll segue, right? Um, basically, I'd love to hear Mark's story and then I'd also like Mark to give us a crash course in identifying the most common metals on our vehicles and how to keep them looking their best through polishing and other means and tips and tricks. Hey Mark, how are you going? Thanks for being with me. Uh Oh, absolute pleasure to be with you, Alex. Uh, I'm doing good, mate. Awesome. A bit of background here. We spoke, funnily enough, nearly a year ago, and we had an, a, a conversation I thoroughly enjoyed, and we've just had one prior to this that straight away we're just jumping into the deep end on everything, which is pretty cool. And uh, it's a topic I don't really have much expertise in, so it's fascinating to hear you talk. There were some really interesting um, comments you made that, even just one just came to mind then, Mark, that I didn't mention prior to this, <clears throat> was um, the pros and cons of ceramic coating metal, which you touched on, but we can leave that for a, uh, further that's on the, one, the conversation. That's the one that I said will upset some people. Ah, good. Okay, excellent. Let's get controversial. Love it. Excellent. <laughs> um, so I uh, will start off, I think, if we start off um, with a bit about you and how you got started in this industry your relationship with Brilliant Polishers, and then we can talk about your range of pol uh, polishers and products after that. Okay. I'll try and keep this pretty short because it's a really, really long story. Um, yep. Basically, I've always had, you know, nice machines and mm -hmm. like to keep them pretty nice. Anyway, back in 2011, I imported a Harley-Davidson from the US, uh, right. and this thing was next level, uh, the metal work and everything on it. And everything I had in the cupboard, no nothing was doing it for me basically right. anyway um i happened to be in bendigo which is where i now live um and there was a heap of really really nice harleys lined up on the street and they were basically show bikes right. and i was mumbling under my breath about you know metal polish and that can't get a decent one etc etc and a yep. guy said to me he said um if you want a good metal polish you got to get it from england and i looked at him and i went what do you mean he goes oh brand called brilliant polish he goes fine you google it you'll find it he goes, it's worth it. Anyway, I went home, jumped on the internet, found it, ordered a couple of bottles, turned up a couple of weeks later. Um, I went, oh, well, what the hell? We'll try this stuff, see what it does. And just using it, I just went, wow, this stuff is is truly different. Um, anyway, a week later, I was looking at my bike and it still was mint. Two weeks later, it's still mint. And I was riding it um, three weeks, four weeks, a month, two months later. And I'm like, wow, I've never seen anything like this. So I, I contacted the company. I said, you know, are you looking for a distributor? And they went, yeah, tell us about your company. I said, I don't have one. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, we got talking and 12 months later, we started importing the product from the UK. Um, uh, it was going well, but just sort of as a hobby business. Mm -hmm. And then in 2016, we bought the company outright. Again, there's okay. a lot of stuff that went on in between. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, we bought the company outright and moved the equipment from the UK to Bendigo. And yeah. it's been basically growing ever since. So, Okay. Yeah. And, and what were you doing um, prior to distributing this product? I've always just been in sales. I, I'm, okay. I, I have basically an engineering background, yeah. um, but always been in the sales side of things. Okay, um, yes. sold everything from lighting systems to um, industrial coating where you get the best do the best before batching on on milk bottles and things so yeah, yeah right. nothing wow. nothing to do professionally with polishing or anything okay um, yeah. but yeah when I went to the states I'm oh, not the states when I went to the UK um, I, I spent a heap of time over there with the guy who owned the business and man my knowledge on on polishing and products and everything just went through the roof so I bet. and yeah. then and then it's been a continual learning curve ever since i got back um yes. yeah and learning well I, I did a lot of work in uh, manufacturing in um, production lines so okay. set, setting it up 
to do it here wasn't an issue. Mm. Um, the issue is is basically getting people to know about it. Mm, mm, yeah, sure. That is. As a guy said to me once, he said, you're going to have a wheelbarrow full of $100 notes that you're selling yep. for 20 bucks each. If nobody <laughs> knows you got them, it's not a good thing. So, yeah, that's yeah. Right. so we, unfortunately, yeah. we've got one of the world's best kept secrets. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Well, I mean, it must have been a pretty amazing product for you to go and um, put so much skin in the game like that off the bat. Well, we basically, my wife and I, and yeah, um, I feel sorry for her because, you know, we, 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 we're still continuing to, to get back where we were, but um, we basically <laughs> sold everything we owned. And, yeah, okay, and, wow. and I, I know I mean everything we owned. Yes, so, right, right. Yeah, what a yeah. commitment, amazing but, story. But the product, there is there is nothing else like it out there. Yeah, it really yeah, is. So, yeah, and it obviously yeah. resonates that it's now uh, in the hands of um, it's it's Aussie, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's Aussie, and it's never going to change. We've been we've been uh, approached by some uh, let's just call it overseas companies to manufacture yes. it for yep. us, and yep. uh, that will never happen. So it's all coming out of Bendigo, is that right? It's all coming out of Bendigo. We Amazing. make it from scratch. Okay. So yeah, most of the raw materials we buy in Australia locally. Um, okay. There's some of the specialty um, products that go into it, like in the metal polishes, the actual abrasives, the abrasives that go in our polishes aren't used by any other polish company in the world. Um, right. and, and they actually come out of Europe. Okay, fascinating. So, yeah, yeah, great. But um, yeah. Okay, so uh, from here, let's talk about um, the range. And you kindly sent me some time ago uh, a few of these to try. Um, as I just mentioned to you, I haven't. I'll start with what's still in the bag. Uh, I, I have a lot of things <laughs> good, to good test. Good to see it's been used. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Importantly, I tested the actual polishes. These are a little bit... Um, uh, I just you have to forgive me, Mark. I do have quite a lot of things no, no. that I no, no. with. All, Look, I'm getting it's, there. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> I can, I'm see definitely... what I, I can see what you've got. Yes, a lot of these things go a long way. You know, you buy them and then you go, shit. Um, so, yeah, I've got the uh, Ultra Shine Quick Detailer. I'll hold that okay, up there. so our specialty, I'll jump back a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Our specialties are metal polishes. Yes. But that said, we truly do the most insane quick detailer. Mm -hmm. um, and for those, I guess, the people that don't know what a quick detailer is, and there's plenty mm -hmm. out there, we, we, yep. we do a lot of trade shows and things like that, and we still get asked, what is a quick detailer? So a quick mm -hmm. detailer is that product where your car's pretty clean, um, and you might take it to a show, or you might have just driven it for a day or so, and it's got a bit of dust and grime on it. You want it clean. You don't want to have to wash it again. Quick detailer. Um Yep. So it's just and it's just a light spray and wipe off with a super soft cloth. Yes, and and the difference I'm guessing here is there's some endurance in protection in yours. Is that right? To a typical, so there is there is some protection in it. The mm -hmm. biggest thing that's and it's got some so it's a micro polish and shine in it. Okay, but yeah, the right. most important thing about it the lubricants in it. So mm. I, I literally had a guy a few years ago had gravel and I mean gravel over. Mm -hmm. um, the side skirts of a hot rod mm -hmm. and he just swept the gravel off um, with a broom and then sprayed. And this, this paint job would be, oh, it's probably 150 grand paint job on this car. Wow. Pretty wow. impressive car. Mm -hmm. And he just grabs out the quick detailer, gives it a spray, wipes it back to mint, not a scratch. Yeah. So yep. it's crazy <laughs> stuff. Excuse me, so, so obviously a very handy product um, uh, to keep uh, around the car. If you've got bird poop and things on it, it, it helps you remove all that. Absolutely. That and and it's it's what all the show guys, uh, all the elite show cars, all the hot rod guys, um, yep. you know, even just the weekend as they take their car to a local car show, um, mm. get there, spray it down, wipe it down, any hard surface. So yep. glass, metal, yep. paint. Yeah, just not on soft fabrics or suede. That's that's yep. that's basically it, and yeah, that's not just ours. It's pretty much yeah. So well, uh, rubbers are fine, um, but just not like I said, materials and and suede and things. Yeah, so, fantastic. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah. The um, other product you yes. had was our um, uh, paint polish. So, like I said, we're renowned for our metal polishes. Yes, exactly. So yep. we do mm -hmm. one and one only. Paint polish. It's a mm -hmm. super high grade Canoba wax. Mm -hmm. um, most people don't even know what Canoba wax is. Canoba mm -hmm. wax is the hardest natural wax on the planet. 
It comes mm. off the leaf of a, um, a canoba tree in Guatemala and Brazil. They scrape it off the leaf, it gets processed, but it's a super hard wax. Now, mm. because it's a natural product, it won't last as long in a shine as some of the synthetics. Mm -hmm. But it actually, in my opinion, actually gives you a better shine. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's one of those products you need to do on your car three or four times a year, um, mm -hmm. whereas some of the synthetic waxes you can literally do once a year. There's an argument that wax can give a bit of a warmer gloss, so to speak, or colour to the paint. I, the, I love it. And, 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 the, and the thing about ours, it's actually it's unique in the fact that it's so easy to put on. Mm -hmm. um, I get people go, oh, I don't want to wax my car. Seriously, yep. if you, with our product, if, if, with that stuff, if you can't wax a car... In 15 minutes, you're mm. not trying. It doesn't yeah. set hard. It 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 will you you use a small amount. It just goes back to a light haze. A couple of minutes, give it a buff off. You can do your whole car and then buff it off. You don't have mm. to wait and do one panel at a time. Um, mm. Most others, if you if you leave it too long, you will never get the stuff off. Yep. The stuff you can actually go and polish 20 cars and then come back and buff them off. So, um, who's your primary uh, target market for this this product? Uh, basically, the enthusiast. Yep. So most, and I, I'm brutally honest about things. Mm -hmm. um, we have, there's a couple of very high elite show cars, guys mm -hmm. that use it. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of the elite guys prefer to use, I don't know, I guess the, the expensive polishes because right. it's not expensive. It's, it's, I think it retails for 40, 45 bucks a bottle and it's yes. a 500 mil bottle. It's a big bottle. Yeah, mm. there's enough in there to do 15, 16 cars. So it's it's not expensive, um, but so easy to use. And one of the most important things about it does not leave white residue on black rubber or trim. Mm. Okay. So cool. if you've ever done any polishing and you've touched a bit of tr black trim with your polish, oh, yeah. yep. and you get that white residue on there, and some of it will not come off. Yes, ours, ours doesn't do that. But it's so yep. easy to use. Um, mm. that it's 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 suitable. So all our products, I say to people, it's designed for amateurs, but they're all used by professionals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And that goes for pretty much every product we make. Fantastic. Um, um, I've got two more products in front of me, and I know there's more, but basically um, I have your uh, aluminium and stainless steel uh, polish. Okay, yep. And it, it, I also have the uh, chrome and nickel polish. Yep. And I remember the boring you were trying to get my head around... Again, I have no real experience with this. There's cut numbers on the side. So yep. the aluminium and stainless steel, we've got cut eight. And the chrome and nickel polish, we've got cut six. And I was trying to do your head in with, can you give me, um, you know, sort of sanding numbers equivalents and how harsh is this stuff? It, and it, I want to use it and, on some glass. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and, and it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't really work like that. It's And it yes. only relates to our products. Mm -hmm. So the most coarse product we do, the higher the number, the more coarse it is, the more cut it has. The mm -hmm. lower the number, the finer it is. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're, if you're working on a metal, aluminium, stainless, brass, that's been really, really neglected, Mm -hmm. Um, you can start with our twelve. Um, okay. Now, now I'm I'm happy to mention other products. There's there's mm -hmm. a product on the market that uh, I'll occasionally uh, refer people to. If you've got something that's very very neglected because it is really coarse, um, you can actually feel the abrasiveness in their product, and that's good old auto soul. Been around I don't know hundred years. Um, yep. Look, it 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 will bring a lot of products back. Um, mm -hmm. that have been terribly neglected. Yes. Unfortunately, the problem with it, unlike, and this is where our product becomes so unique, is every metal polish on the market, they all, they will say they have a sealant in them and they, that they'll, they you know, give a great shine and they'll, they'll seal it and it all works. None of them work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, none of them work. The mm -hmm. only one that works and I'm, you know, okay, yes, I'm pushing my own wheelbarrow a little bit, <laughs> is brilliant polish. And, that, and that's why people yeah. like the stuff. Because yep. they do the work and it holds a shine. And that's mm. what blew me away. That's why I bought the company, because it's yeah, different. Right. Mm. Uh, it is. Mm. So, yeah. So which but, one did you start out with that blew you away? What was the... Okay, so so the two that I actually bought from the UK, we've changed mm. the, the labels a little bit and everything, was exactly the two you held up, which was, oh, right. yep, the aluminium and stainless. And it used to be the chrome and nickel used to be called chrome slash hot environment because it's mm. actually suitable. It will never stain or mark on mm. any metals that get hot, like chrome yeah, exhaust right. pipes. Mm -hmm. um, um, if you want to use it on aluminium rocker covers, 
if you leave mm. any on there, we get a lot of people come to us, especially hot rods, and I don't know why hot rods, but we get a lot of hot rodders come to us and they say, oh, I've got watermarks on my uh, aluminium rocker covers. Yes. And I, my first question is, do you ever wash it? And <laughs> nine times out of ten hot rodders, they don't wash their engine. You know, most right. people, you know, they wash the hot rod, but yeah. they don't lift the bonnet and, and wash the engine. So yeah, my right. thing is, is, well, how did it get water on it? It's not. It's actually it's actually polished residue in most cases right. that's been right. left on there right. and it burns in and it leaves like watermarks. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 So yeah, look, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen with anyone's polish if you buff it hard enough to clean it up. But the beauty of our polishes is you don't have to buff hard to clean them up. It's just a wipe down. But yeah, mm. so the the chrome one is actually probably the only metal polish in the world that's yeah. actually designed for really really hot metals. But it, mm. it got really complicated in trying to explain it to people because um, mm. they'd see this hot environment on it. And I'd get mm. people going, oh, my chrome bumper sits in the sun and gets hot. So that's the thing. Yeah, you need it because it's a chrome polish, but not because your chrome bumper gets hot in the sun. It's, mm, it was more eng engine temperature things. So we changed the name. It's it's finer than the aluminium polish, being a six. Um, for chrome and nickel, i.e. plated finishes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so the, the thing about plated finishes, they're micron thick. And I get people going, oh, I've got chrome, I've got scratches in it. How do I fix it? You can't. Unfortunately, with chrome, the best chrome will ever be is when it comes out of the factory. Everything mm. you basically do to it afterwards could or might damage it. Mm. So that's why you've actually... And chrome's not cheap to get done. That's why you've got to be really careful what you put on it. So And yeah, going right. back to again, and okay, I'm happy to, like I said, talk about other products. Products like Autosol. Autosol should never go near chrome work. It is yeah, too right. coarse. Like yeah, I said, it's a good product for bringing things back, but it will actually put micro scratches into your chrome. Mm -hmm. Fascinating so, stuff. Yeah. So I guess this um, this goes to my question: um, What advice would you give about selecting the right polish for your needs? So I guess you talk a little bit about your average car and what components your products are suited to, so to speak. Okay. So the average car, well, mm -hmm. modern cars. Modern car. Yes. Modern yeah. car basically has no chrome. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, if they have what looks to be chrome, it's not. So if you use a metal polish on it, you're going to regret it. Because, and to identify that, Mark, what, what, what should uh, you do? Oh, look, basically, it's it's pretty much, if, if, if you give it even a flick with your finger, you can tell it's plastic. Okay. okay? Yep. So it's vaporised, um, it's a chrome finish over plastic. Mm -hmm. And if you put a metal a metal polish on it, ours or anyone else's, you'll actually damage it. So yeah, right. all those chrome finishes and chrome trims on all new and modern, super modern cars, mm. um, there's very few out there that are actually chrome. So mm. it's a it's a wipe down um, with a cleaner or a quick detailer or something like that, mm. or just and, and just wash have, it. A lot of them have clear yeah. anyway over them now as well, right? Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. in in the modern cars, it's <laughs> more. Um, for your aluminium where people will get rid of their wheels that come with it and they want to go mm. custom wheels because most of your aluminium wheels that come with a modern car, they're actually not polished. They'll be usually painted or powder coated and then they'll have even a clear over that. Um, mm. So they're not polishable. It's when you actually get rid of those and you go and put a set of Simmons on or, you know, you, you put a set of billets on, um, now you're back to aluminium wheels or billet wheels billet and aluminium same thing um and that's where you're doing your, your polishing mm, so okay and so uh, so the biggest product we actually sell is the aluminium and stainless polish what about those uh big uh metal bull bars on four okay. drives so again um they're either painted or they're aluminium and if they're oh stainless there's a few stainless not many most of them are, are steel or aluminium steel ones are always painted your aluminium ones um can be painted but are usually just aluminium raw aluminium and again our polish on it is just nuts and a and a tip for anyone polishing a bull bar so i'll i'll, I'll, I'll jump back to our, our polish just for a second so it's it's Liquid. It actually has a ball inside it to mix yes. it when you when you shake it. And if you actually tip some out, uh, they're all different colours. The aluminium one is actually a green liquid. Mm -hmm. um, so 
you need you if you're polishing a wheel or, or etc you only need a couple of drops a mm-hmm. little bit goes it goes a long way so you give it a good shake put a couple of drops so getting back to your ball bars if someone's got like tubular tubular ball bar the best thing you can do is not your wife's best towels but go and get a nice soft towel you know five dollar one from you know um target or kmart or something cut it into strips only you know inch and a half you know 50 mil two inches wide sort of thing the bit that where you're going to be polishing with put a few drops of the polish on it wrap it around your ball bar and then it's just i don't know whether i'm making any sense the cloth yes, goes you around your yep. ball bar and then it's just Backers and forwards, you work over your bull bar. It's just yes. so much quicker and easier. Follow the contour of the bar, basically, and pull yep. sort of back around yep. for people that yep. are listening and trying to visualise this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, if that makes so, sense. And, and, and on all your flat areas, if if yep. if you're so, I, the thing I get from everyone is, oh, metal polish, I hate it. It's too hard. Okay, if you neglect your metal and let it leave it for a long period of time, yeah, it's a lot of work to bring it back. But if you keep on it, it's actually not that hard. But even if you do neglect it, the beauty of our polishes, you can use them all on mechanical buffs. Mm. So Mm. you can put, doesn't matter if it's lamb's wool, foam, calico, our polishes work well on all of them and you can't burn our polish. So it doesn't matter whether you've got a big, you know, six inch lamb's wool buff and you're running it over your aluminium bull bar or, you know, the center of your wheels or something and it's turning at a couple of hundred revs, it's fine. Or you put some wheel so... I don't know whether you can see these. I'll take I'll take them out of the pack. I can. Can can you explain what they are to people listening? Yep, that's I'll take them out. So what we also sell are these. Can you see those? All right, Alex. Yep, I can. Yeah, yes. So they're yep. they're micro buffs in different shapes and sizes. So they're oh. actually a felt pad, and because our polish is a liquid, you can put one or two drops, and that's all you put on it, and you can mm. whack them either in a drill or a Dremel or a die grinder. Um, and for hard to get into areas rather than trying to get your fingers in and, you know, that hard work that kills people and makes people hate polishing, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you use these and it's just, they just run over it. And then all it is, our cleanup is a simple wipe off. We don't have any of that white residue that you're left with with everyone else that, like my Harley, for example, there's Allen key heads and things like that on it. I used to have to, when I finished polishing it, I used to have to get cotton buds and, you know, you'd be getting little screwdrivers with cloths wrapped around to try and clean all the excess gunk out. With brilliant polish, there is none of that. Mm, awesome. So it, it actually halves your polishing time. Fantastic. And it does. And it's Great. that's everything we do was about making life easier. That is. Excellent. So, so the short answer is um, this aluminium stainless steel polish is the go-to. That's and... the go-to. That's, that's, that's our biggest selling product. Yep. That okay. Is. And it... And it actually, like I said, I, I don't want it to be. It's more about what we what it does than than anything. But yeah, it's in two different. There's I've a, got a random one for you. What about jewelry? <laughs> okay, jewelry. I don't know whether you can. Ah uh, yes, right. So we're looking okay, at an orange so, bottle called Can't silver call and gold one. polish. So there you on, go. on on that <laughs> scale that you mentioned a while back. Yes. Um, you said there's a scale. That, so it's like I said, it's only applicable to brilliant polish. So it starts at 12, goes down to one. So we do a restorer, which has got a lot of cut. We're actually reformulating that. There'll be a new one out, even better. Um, Just holding shortly. up the bottle so for people. Yep. That, so they so can that's see the chrome with, with, with a six on it. Yep. yep. So there's a restorer that's a 12. Um, the aluminium is an eight. We do a brass and copper that's an eight now the brass and copper and the aluminium polish actually both have the same abrasives in them that's why they're both an eight but what they have that's different and this is where we differentiate ourselves from everyone else they actually have different sealants because aluminium oxidizes differently to brass and copper Mm -hmm. so we Mm -hmm. specialize in metal polishes because not all metal so it scares me a bit some companies they'll have a they'll have a bottle and they'll go yeah this bottle does Everything. It'll do, you know, your super fine gold right through to stainless steel. And as, as I say to people, do you really want to be polishing a family heirloom like maybe a silver goblet or something that might have been passed down 10 generations mm. um, with the same polish you go and polish, you know, stainless steel truck exhaust or something? Metals aren't all metals. So that's this why... Is, this, 
Sorry, this sounds like a good time to jump into um, a couple of products that I mentioned uh, beforehand that it may be controversial and then you're going to drop a bomb after that on another <laughs> another uh, popular uh, method for protecting metal. But um, I want to touch on this one because I was actually quite a fan of these products and, and what I'm about to hold up a, a bottle of... Uh, can we see these? And again, no sponsorship plugging or cash has changed hands here. Uh, so we've All got... Good. Uh, I'll just explain my little story here. So I've got um, a bottle of green fluid, which is uh, a first part system called aluminium um, deoxidizer, which is step one. And then I have what's called the original purple metal polish. And the idea is that you, you rub this on and it does the heavy work of deoxidizing basically. And then um, you come along and you polish purple. And the context of my use with this this product and where I was quite happy with it was I had a camper trailer and the front of that camper trailer had a second hand camper trailer which I restored mm -hmm. and it had a checker plate all over the front of it and you know um, if you try and use uh, a polisher on checker plate it can be pretty pretty uh, consuming of pads and <laughs> arms and finish and all this kind of stuff so I was quite no, happy that polish. I could just yeah okay cool cool all right so i was really thrilled that i could just rub this stuff on and it did that heavy lifting for me and then um i used that purple metal polish and i think it's going back quite a while now but i think i might have even put some sort of sealant over the top of it which would have been pretty typical of my my process but that made life really easy for me on checker plate that's the bottom line but behind the scenes you just told me to throw this one the green one in the bin and you can okay, go now so, mark and <laughs> explain <laughs> so to me why I'll, I'll, I'll give you i'll give you a story on that green one okay yes. so um we do a trade stand at summer Nats every year uh mm -hmm. the crazy car festival at yes. canberra most people canberra, know of yeah. summer Nats. Mm -hmm. um so a couple of years ago there was a young guy and he was uh probably 18 19 had a stunning Pretty sure it was a falcon from memory. Anyway, he had made the top 60 show cars, which is a pretty incredible feat, mm. right, in prejudging. Anyway, his dad decided he was going to help him do a full detail on this car prior to it going on display for the final judging. So he grabbed the deoxidizer and he went over this guy, this young kid's billet wheels, okay? Mm. It destroyed the wheels. Mm hmm so what deoxidizer does, it takes the oxide off aluminium, okay? The oxide mm. that comes off aluminium is what you're trying to polish off, mm. right? By using a chemical to strip it, right, you're actually doing it really harshly. Now, if mm. you're talking truck wheels or something like that where, you know, you only want them to look good from 20 feet away, fine, not a bad product, mm. okay? Mm. But if you're talking something that is going to be inspected up close, i.e. a show car or something like that, or your pride and joy, it can actually stain the aluminium. And that's wow. what happened in this case, okay? Mm. Mm. And so we did the, the deoxidizer on it and then ripped out the purple and tried to polish. And this guy spent hours, and I mean hours, trying to get these wheels back right. Mm. And... It wasn't, it wasn't fixing them. Um, mm. Anyway, uh, long story short, they came and saw us. They knew that we were there and said, what do you suggest? I went and had a look at it. And in, it, took, it took probably half an hour a wheel, but with our aluminium polish, we managed to actually get the stains out. But mm. so a deoxidizer, yeah, if, if it's a dirty, grotty, like I said, and not even, a you know, most trucks on the road, you shouldn't even use it on because they're too good for that. Mm. But, yeah, it's 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 not a nice product. Mm, okay. Yes, it, has, it mm. has some applications. But in typical detailing and things like that, even on checker plate. So checker mm. plate, you just get a foam pad on a random orbital, put 10 drops of our polish on it, go to town, wipe it off, you're done. Yeah, okay, fantastic. I just noticed a claim on here that it removes rust from chrome. Okay, so any polish, and I don't care whose it is, will remove rust from chrome. The okay. problem with that, right? So mm. I'll, I'll do a step back and I'll give you a little explanation on chrome, right? Mm. Chrome is porous. Most people go, chrome is solid, it's a hard surface. No, it's a soft surface, it's porous. And if you don't keep it sealed and keep those pores sealed, what happens, and everyone's seen it, you get those tiny little pin dots appear mm 
on your chrome. Eventually those pin dots, they'll get moisture in them and they'll start to actually rust and then then or corrode and then they'll get bigger and bigger and all of a sudden everything blisters and falls apart okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. so the rust you often see will be either from under the chrome or typically the steel that's underneath right mm -hmm. so getting rid of that rust all you're doing like i said any polish should get rid of that rust right all you're doing is masking and 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 polishing the, the, the holes that are in your chrome to make them look better. You're not fixing your chrome. Um, all you're doing is masking it to make it look better. Mm. The best thing you can do for chrome is twice a year. Get some polish, some metal polish. Mm -hmm. A couple of drops on a cloth. And if it's good chrome, it's not hard work. It's, it's a couple of drops on a super soft cloth. And I mean, like, the softest microfiber you can get, right? Mm -hmm. A couple of drops on it, and it's a wipe. No no, no pressure. It's a gentle wipe over. All your chrome work, buff it off. If you do that twice a year, your chrome will last forever. What do you think on, on, on rust? What do you think of the method of using a little bit of alfoil and water to rub to remove that rust? Bad news? It, it, it'll take it off, yep. but it's not going to fix anything. Yes. You know, okay. I I went to a car club a while back. I do a lot of guest um, speaking at car clubs and motorcycle clubs and things like that. And there was a guy stood up and he goes, oh, yeah, I keep all my chrome maintained with Coca-Cola and aluminium foil. <laughs> well, the, the aluminium foil is just going to eventually scratch the hell out of the chrome. And yep. the Coke, yes, it'll clean it up because you're washing it with acid. Mm -hmm. right? I don't know if you've ever thrown a, you know, the old two cent coin in a, Glass of Coke mm. and leave it. It's Coke's acid, okay? Mm. Like all soft drinks, basically. Um, so what it's doing, it's, it's yes, it's stripping everything out, but all those micro pores that I was talking about, your Coke's actually making them all bigger. Interesting. So, yes, you're washing them out, and it'll look great for, for a, you know, a week or a month, but as it starts falling apart and, the, and, the, and, and everything, those pores just get bigger and bigger because you're not sealing anything. So even if you start to get those pin pricks in your chrome, if you can seal it, you'll slow that down dramatically. But things like Coca-Cola and aluminium foil are not going to do it for you. Mm. Mm. Not. All you're going to do is do more damage. It'll look good very, very short term, but long term, no, not going to do it for you. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So uh, we entered this uh, part of the, uh, the, sh the <laughs> this, this conversation with perhaps a little bit of a bombshell you want to share with people regarding um, uh, some wizardry called ceramic coating. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So a lot of people, when we talk about metal polishing and everything, they think I'm against ceramic coating. Not yes. at all. If, if, if you want to ceramic coat your vehicle, whether it be a motorcycle, car, truck, whatever, um, knock yourself out. Okay. Um, me, as long as you put a good wax on it a few times a year, that does what you need. I understand what ceramic does. It's it's a super hard coating, um, and it's to protect it and make it easier to clean and all those sort of things. Can I, can I just jump in really quickly for people that aren't yep. perhaps familiar with it or have bought through a dealership and um, haven't really had it last long anyway, but really the key advantage beyond wax and then the evolution into sealants, polymer sealants, and then in ceramic coating is perhaps longevity would be the key thing. So it's people exactly. that don't don't really want to spend the time on a regular basis maintaining things. Yep, yep. So I'm, I'm actually not against ceramic coating. Some of them, there's some really good ones out there and there's some really poor ones. And I don't get involved in which one's which and all and all that sort of thing um, at all. But yeah, but for me, um, we still sell a lot of that to people who have ceramic coated their cars mm -hmm. because ceramic coat still needs to be maintained. You can't a super the ceramic coat isn't the be all what was and that end product, all. Mark? Sorry, I couldn't quite that's, see that's, that. That's 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 our high gloss premium polish and wax. Yeah, right. Okay, so you use it over ceramic coatings. First Absolutely, mm. we sell a lot of it for that. Mm. Um, it just it just adds a little bit more shine and mm. and yeah, like I said, ceramic coat still needs protecting. So, like I said, I'm not against it. In general, where I am against it mm. is metal polishing, mm. polished metal should never have a permanent seal over it of any description. Mm. Number one, it needs to breathe, okay? 
The other thing is if you ceramic coat, let's say you've got an awesome set of billet wheels, it's a show car, you've polished them up insanely and you ceramic coat them, great, they look great and they'll probably look great for a long time. But if you actually ever drive that car and a stone or something like that hits that ceramic coat and does actually chip it, all of a sudden you've now got a, a weak spot in your ceramic coat where oxygen is going to get to your metal. All of a sudden you're going to start to get black marks under your ceramic coat that you can't fix. Mm. And you'll have to chemically strip your wheel or hard sand it back. Mm. That's so, interesting. Yeah. A lot of people wouldn't so, think about so that. So a lot of professional metal polishers, um, and I know some of the most professional uh, metal polishers in the world, uh, will recommend you don't ceramic coat metal. So, mm. Don't get me wrong, there's still plenty that do. Um, I know a couple of really, really, really high-end detailers that do. Um, it works for them. That's fine. But it's yep. it's definitely not recommended. Okay, so, that's, that's yeah, great. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just going to ask you something on that note. Um, you were mentioning, uh, oh, that's right, uh, the use of, I'm intrigued a little bit by the use of this um, high gloss premium polish and wax over the coating. A bit of an Achilles heel with ceramic coatings tends to be water spotting. And have you noticed any difference in water spotting, or water spotting, I should say behavior, um, um, water spotting when this product is applied over ceramic coatings? Does it reduce uh, water spotting from? Well, from it will because it's a wax and the wax will repel water. Right. So, yeah, right. yeah. So all, all we've had uh, is great results. Okay, so I've, ne great. I've never had anybody come back and go, yeah, nah, don't want to do it. Right, so, okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But like I said, stuff. most ceramic coats, you, 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 the good ones, you probably don't need to, but there's some people that use, well, I know some guys that have got some show cars, and I'm talking very high-end show cars, they're ceramic coated, and they still run a wax over the top. Hmm. Um, are there do. any metals or finishes that shouldn't be polished with your products on that note? Um, not really. Um, when I say not really, because we do that big range of metal polishes, mm. like I said before, you don't want to, if you picked up um, like Autosol, and I'm not trying to you know, can Autosol at all. Like I said, there's some places for it. Um, but Autosol, for example, should never be used on jewellery, you know, mm. silver and gold, you know. Um our silver and gold one. Did I pick the right one up? No, I didn't even pick the right one up. I'm losing the plot. Um, um, the silver and gold one, that's a rating of one. That will not remove a grain of gold off pure gold. I actually, mm. Funny story, I actually had a customer come up to me a little while ago, and he's in the car game, so there's a chance he'll see this. And he said to me, he goes, I love your silver and gold polish. I'm like, yeah, okay, okay. He goes, there's nothing better than opening up my safe and seeing all the gold bars in there shiny. And I said, <laughs> and I said, I can relate to that. I said, I open up my safe and I see nothing. <laughs> That's it, exactly. Hey, I know that feeling well too. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, wow, how cool is that? He actually has all these gold bars that he actually polishes. Um, they're all investment gold bars that any safe yeah. that he polishes with that. So, Gosh. yeah. But we've actually we've actually now got um, in the very elite end of show cars around the world. So, pretty much everyone in the world uses those. Mm. Okay, <laughs> but we've now got so we do one called Ultimate. So Ultimate was designed, like I said, this was a UK company originally. This was designed for Rolls-Royce. Mm -hmm. um, Rolls-Royce, I believe, through our distributor in the UK, still buy a couple of bottles a year. Um, mm -hmm. So it's designed for the old Rolls-Royce radiator shrouds that were made out of German silver. Sorry, what was it's, that product there, Mark? Which one were you holding? So that's the purple one. Oh, I see. Yep. Yeah, so it's called right. Ultimate. All okay. Right. So yep. it's, it's, a, it's a four, I think, four. Three, three. So it's okay. very, very, very fine. So German silver is a very, very soft metal. So the old uh, Rolls-Royce radiator shrouds, uh, if you tried most metal polishes on them, uh, and I mean most, um, and I don't care whether it's the biggest names in the world, you will scratch them. Mm. Um, so that was designed for that. But we've got a lot of show guys now with really, really high-end cars that mm – -hmm use that now as as the final polish 
um, on all their metal work. So I'm talking, you know, blowers and, you know, all polished engine bays and things like that. But then we've actually had a few lately that have actually gone to the silver and gold. Like I said, it's a one. Um, so there's some guys from South Australia. They've got a beautiful goldy color coupe and they use that one. They won, they won everything last year. Um, Motor X, Summonats. Um, what was the, the car? Kind of? Um, it's just called 35 Coupe. Okay. It's a, a 35. Oh man, I'm doing my head in today. It's, <laughs> it's a, it's a Chevrolet Ford. Yeah, they'll okay. kill. Yeah. They'll they'll yep. ring me and kill me. <laughs> You're in trouble but now. Anyway, yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it's that's the level that some of these show guys are going to now. Um, like they spent, and this is where it gets a bit crazy. They spent, I think it was eight hours a wheel. Mm. You know, now the average I bunny you mentioning that in our first yeah, conversation. The average, the average person out there does not have eight hours to spend polishing <laughs> one wheel. But that's yes. that's 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 the craziness that people are going to. And their motivation so, for going yeah. to that product is is with that that level of abrasive is just the, as much gloss as they possibly can. Oh, out of the it. shine! Yeah. It's it's shinier than chrome. Mm. The mm. finish was people are going they're chrome wheels. No, they were polished aluminium wheels. You know, it was it's just nuts. So yeah, yeah. Amazing. But another another big tip for people, if if I can interrupt. With our metal polishes, because they're a liquid and you don't use much of it, if you get people going, oh, I've got aluminium and it's got a scratch in it and whatever, I don't know how to get it out, right? And you mention, just sand it out. And people just get really, really scared. Sanding aluminium isn't an issue, right? Mm -hmm. People shouldn't be scared to do it, okay? If you're doing it with a mechanical sander, yeah, be really, really careful. But if you're doing mm. it with hand wet and dry, mm. um, you know, if you've got a, a bit of a gouge in the side of your alloy wheel or whatever, you can normally sand them out. But the biggest problem that people have is they do the sanding and they and they look at their their aluminium and it's a sanded finish. Mm. And they go, wow, that's not shiny at all. So what you can actually do with our polishes is when you get down, if you're sanding and you get down to a, like a 2,000 grit wet and dry, you can actually put a couple of drops of our polish on there and that will instantly then really, really quickly go from a sanded finished to nearly a polished finish. So and while you you're just, sanding, you're saying put the product on the sand. Yeah, on, on, use yep. use yep. the aluminium and stainless polish or even the chrome one, yep. even the chrome and nickel one, use it instead of water on your wet and dry. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then you 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 nearly immediately go from a sanded finish to a to a a, a semi polished finish, and then wow. it's so easy to actually then just hand polish it back to being mint. That is fascinating. Great. And you can't you can't do it with anyone else's polishes. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All righty. So uh, let's uh, unless you want to share any tips and on that note or anything else, I will. Um. Oh, look. Uh, basically. Um, Anyone that's got nice wheels and things like that, the, the, the most important thing for people is use good polish. Um, yeah, I'm going to give Brian a bit of a half a plug. Um, yeah. the, the, the thing about these polishes that make them so unique, and like we're now supplying, most of Australia's top car builders use it. Um, so many professional details around Australia and the US, car builders in the US are using it because it's different. So there's no mess when you're doing your polishing. Um, very, very little cleanup. Usually just a wipe with a soft cloth over cleans it up. You don't have that white gunk getting in everywhere. And it's got a sealant in it that actually lasts. So I probably shouldn't tell some people this, but my Harley using maybe the product that you held up just before, I used to have to polish my bike every three or four weeks. With the purple gear? Yeah. Mm. Yep. Dead set. Yep. I now do my Harley once a year. So that was what you used to use. That's what mm. I used to use. Okay. So people right. go, oh, you don't know anything about purple. I've used purple a lot. <laughs> I, I, I know it pretty well. Yeah. You know, it's yep. not a bad polish. It's probably after brand. And okay, I'm, I'm very biased, but after brand, it's probably one of the better ones on the market. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And, and I crazy... mentioned to you, sorry that I, I, have typically used um, angel wax and angel use... wax products are first class i can't I, I'm, I'm not about knocking you know everything that's opposition um mm -hmm. there is some really good products on the market angel wax is one of them 
Angel Wax again, products. This is a- a paste basically which is different again yeah yeah so usually what you can feel in any of your paste or your creams if you actually get a couple of get a little bit on your fingers mm-hmm. and actually rub it together you can actually feel the grit mm. in it mm. okay you can't feel other than our like number 12 polishes yep any of our aluminium our chrome um any of those polishes you actually can't feel the abrasives in them mm. so it's not about the, the thing about polishing metal. It's not about the size of the abrasive. It's about the efficiency of it. So yeah. our abrasives are super, super, super fine, even in our aluminium polish. Yeah. But they are 10 times efficient than the bigger abrasives. Mm. Mm. So you get amazing results with a super fine, fine polish, which, like I said, you, you in most cases, you'll get your results quicker with our polish than you will with a way coarser polish and way more incredible um and result mm, mm. this this uh you know obviously sounds like a fairly innovative product in its own right uh but the, you know what's the future of metal polishing look like can you see any innovations is there technologies evolving now that look in, in, the, in the auto game um you know i wish i had this business back in the you know 40s 50s 60s 70s where you know <laughs> chrome bumpers and and all that sort of stuff unfortunately most cars today are all plastic. They have some metalized plastic on them. Um, even most of you, you know, everyone's going to uh, four wheel drives and your SUVs and things like that. And they're all going black wheels, which to me always look like they're dirty. Doesn't matter with how clean they are. Um, so our, our market really is the custom car guys. That yes. is your hot rods, your custom car guys, um, or the street people that get sick of the black wheels and want something more stunning so that's mm. that's where our current market is um down the track i don't see that changing although there seems to be a trend um in the us it looks like black wheels are actually starting to go out mm. um and they're actually starting to come it'll be interesting to see what sema uh, for most people uh there's a big show in vegas and it starts this week or next week yes. uh called sema Mm-hmm. And it's a specialty aftermarket people. Mm-hmm. Um, we'd actually like to have a trade stand there very soon. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. We're actually doing okay in the states, so um, yeah. Yeah. there will. I, my gut feeling is there'll be a number of the top cars at SEMA that get unveiled next week that will be done with brilliant polish. But um, mm-hmm. my gut feeling is I think you'll start to see more cars at these high end shows in the states going back to your polished wheels and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, your blowers and, and all that sort of stuff. So, mm. look, you know, painted is, is nice. Uh, black is okay. Bling is is mint, you know. <laughs> you, you you look at an old uh, 57 Chev that's fully polished. Mm. Oh, my God, they are just stunning, the chrome and everything. And I, to me, a, a modern car with black wheels, it's not even comparable. But that's that's... Me and my bias, I guess. And and clearly bikes, so, right? The Harleys and the... Um, oh, look. Yeah. Our, our, so our biggest market around the world is the show cars, custom cars, hot rods, um, mm. Harleys, Indians. Um, mm. We've now got um, some of our polish into some of the um, Indian and Harley shops around Australia. Not enough, obviously. Mm. Um, but, yeah, so that, trucks... Um, We've had truckies that have gone to our polishers and they've gone from some of the truckies will be, they'll polish their truck every week, all mm. the metal work. They'll do it every week. And we've got guys who have gone from doing it every week to doing it three or four times a year. Mm. So, mm. yeah, it's yeah, just, that's... it's, it's, but that's, that's where our market, market is. Yeah, great. Uh, okay. Is, so, yeah. Um, before I wrap up, is there anything else you wanted to share, Mark, that I've missed or you get asked commonly? <laughs> um, I think we've, Possibly, I'll I'll get off here, Alex, and I'll go bugger. Um, <laughs> but no, I think I think we've pretty much um, covered the majority of it. Um, people shouldn't be afraid of of polishing metals. Then they're, they're not that hard. Just make sure you use you know the applicable products. Um, it's like everything. If you've got a nice car, everything comes down to either the buff pad you use or the microfiber you use. So we actually now sell. And I haven't put it on our website yet, so some people will go crook at me. But yep. we're back in stock again of 
we do a microfiber that's specifically for metal polishing. And it's mm -hmm. actually, and I, I've got no idea whether you can see it, but it's actually a long fiber microfiber. Right. So most of your microfiber cloths are really short microfiber. Mm -hmm. This, this, these cloths actually aren't that great for typical detailing. For, for for metal polishing, oh my god, the difference they make is insane. Do you happen to know the GSM so, and blend sort of factor on those? Um, I do, but I don't want to say. Okay, fair enough. Yep, no worries. <laughs> so Just it's, buy it's, one and it's, use it and live the dream. It's um, it's <laughs> they're unique. They're unique to us at this stage, as far as I know. Ah, cool. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Long no long worries. story, but but um, yeah, they'll be back okay. on our website. Oh, hopefully, in the next day or two, we got stock again. Speaking but, of websites, how about we give everyone the web address who's listening? Uh, it's just, yes, we're an Australian company and very, very, very proud to be Australian, as I said. Uh, the product will never be made anywhere but Australia. Um, it's just brilliantpolish.com. Mm -hmm. That is. And, if, and so uh, that's for the Aussies. Uh, everyone. Yep, so so, so ha, ha, brilliant, yep. brilliant with one L. Right. Because... It's one hell of a shine. There you are. Now I did I didn't make the slogan up, it came with the business. But yeah, so it's brilliant with one L. Um so brilliantpolish.com for Australia, brilliantpolishamerica.com if you happen to be in the US. Yes, right. And and you're stocked uh, on, on a handful of I'm just Googling uh, detailing shed, which I'm a fan of. Detail So Central yeah, if guys. if you're a professional detailer, detailing shed, um carry our products. Um Oh, he's going to kill me. Um, the detailing outlet in Melbourne. Um, Detail Central? Detail Central. Oh, yes. my God. How yep. can I forget that? Yeah, yep. yep, yep. So the boys at Detail Central carry it. Detailing Shed carry it. Yep. Um, it's pretty readily available. And the guys in the States obviously uh, head over to brilliantpolishamerica.com. Yeah, brilliantpolishamerica.com for the US. Okay, yes. So, yeah, fascinating. And if anyone's Great. got any questions, I'm I'm happy for them to on our website. There's a um, link there to send us messages. Uh, I'm happy to answer anyone's questions about metal polishing or you know car, general car detailing if I can. I don't proclaim to be a car detailer. I know more about metal polishing than I do about um, you know correcting paint. Like I said, we we actually only do one paint polish. As I said, it's a finishing polish wax. We don't yes. get involved in cutters and things like that. It's mm. stuff that we don't want to be involved in, basically. Just on that note before you go, what what pad combination? Obviously, just a very, very fine finishing pad for those people who are learning or, or wanting to dabble. Again, this is actually a very safe place to dabble with a machine polisher, isn't it? You get a very soft oh, foam, get a dual-action polisher and this gear, and you can have yep. a bit of a play. Absolutely. So a soft foam pad, um, mm. I've had people put it on with... Put it on and take it off with woolen pads. Um, right. of, of Calico's too coarse for it. But, mm -hmm. yeah, super soft um, foam pad or, or wool. Um, yeah, absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, or even, like I said, every product we do is designed to be used by hand but can be used with machine. Mm -hmm. That's great. And like I said, the, met the metal polishes you cannot burn at any speed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. unlike your purple... Um, that you've got there. If you try mm -hmm. that on a buff, any more than two or three hundred revs, mm -hmm. and it will burn and go black and sticky. Mm -hmm. Auto solves mm -hmm. the same thing, and as are pretty much everyone else's polishers. Um, ours, I've got guys that run them on die grinders at twenty and thirty thousand revs. Mm -hmm. Wow! It won't burn. It won't wow. burn. That's a huge advantage. It's crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, fascinating. Um, that is. Mark, uh, unless you've got to add, uh, you'd like to add anything else at this point, I can probably wrap it up. Um, no, that's you know, cool. I, you know, I, I just hope, I just hope it's been entertaining for people, and I, I hope people have learnt a, a tiny smidgen about uh, metal polishing. I'm sure. I'm sure they have. Absolutely. Um, again, uh, that website address for people in Australia, if you don't mind reading it out again. Yeah, it's just brilliantpolish.com, but brilliant with one L. One L. Excellent. Great. Mark, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to chat with me today. No, um, Alex, absolutely pleasure, mate. Thank you very, very much. Excellent. Take care, Mark. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Thanks for listening. We'd be grateful for your support with the like and subscribe. Cheers.